my lord Adonai, the dalliest with the magister in the treasure house of pearls, let him listen to the echo of your kisses. Is not the starry heaven shaken as a leaf at the tremulous rapture of your love? Am not I the flying spark of light whirled away by the great wind of your perfection? Yea, cried the Holy One, and from thy spark will I, the Lord, kindle a great light. I will burn through the gray city in the old and desolate land. I will cleanse it from its great impurity. And thou, O prophet, shalt see these things, and thou shalt heed them not. Now is the pillar established in the void. Now is Asi fulfilled of Asar. Now is Hur let down into the animal soul of things like a fiery star that falleth upon the darkness of the earth. Through the midnight thou art dropped, O my child, my conqueror, my sword girt captain, O Hur, and they shall find thee as a black, gnarled, glittering stone, and they shall worship thee. My prophet shall prophesy concerning thee, around thee the maidens shall dance, and bright bays be born unto them. Thou shalt inspire the proud ones with infinite pride, and the humble ones with an ecstasy of abasement. All this shall transcend the known and the unknown with somewhat that hath no name. For it is as the abyss of the arcana that is opened in the secret palace of silence. Thou hast come hither, O my prophet, thou grave paths. Thou hast eaten of the dung of the abominable ones. Thou hast prostrated thyself before the goat and the crocodile. The evil man hath made thee a plaything. Thou hast wandered as a painted harlot, ravishing with sweet scent and Chinese coloring in the streets. Thou hast darkened thine eye pits with coal. Thou hast tinted thy lips with vermilion. Thou hast plastered thy cheeks with ivory enamels. Thou hast played the wanton in every gate and byway of the great city. The men of the city have lusted after thee to abuse thee and to beat thee. They have mouthed the golden spangles of fine dust, wherewith thou didst bedeck thine hair. They have scourged the painted flesh of thee with their whips. Thou hast suffered unspeakable things. But I have burnt within thee as a pure flame without oil. In the midnight I was brighter than the moon. In the daytime I exceeded utterly the sun. In the byways of thy being I flamed and dispelled the illusion. Therefore thou art holy before me. Therefore thou art my virgin unto eternity. Therefore I love thee with surpassing love. Therefore they that despiseth thee shall adore thee. Thou shalt be lovely and pitiful toward them. Thou shalt heal them of the unutterable evil. They shall change in their destruction, even as two dark stars that crash together in the abyss and blaze up in an infinite burning. All this did Adonai pierce my being with his sword that hath four blades, the blade of the thunderbolt, the blade of the pylon, the blade of the serpent, the blade of the phallus. Also he taught me the holy unutterable word, Arari. So that I melted the sixfold gold into a single invisible point, whereof naught may be spoken. For the majesty of this opus is a secret majesty, and the sign of the master thereof is a certain ring of lapis lazuli, with the name of my master, who am I, and the eye in the midst thereof. Also he spake and said, This is a secret sign, and thou shalt not disclose it unto the profane, nor unto the neophyte, nor unto the zealotor, nor unto the practicus, nor unto the philosophus, nor unto the lesser adept, nor unto the greater adept. But unto the exempt adept thou shalt disclose thyself, if thou hast need of him for the lesser operations of thine art. Except the worship of the foolish people whom thou hatest, the fire is not defiled by the altars of Gebers, nor is the moon contaminated by the incense of them that adore the Queen of Night. Thou shalt dwell among the people as a precious diamond among cloudy diamonds, and crystals, and pieces of glass. Only the eye of the just merchant shall behold thee, and plunging his hand shall single thee out and glorify thee before all men. But thou shalt heed none of this. Thou shalt be ever the heart, and I, the serpent, will coil close about thee. 
My coil shall never relax throughout the aeons. Neither change, nor sorrow, nor unsubstantiality shall have thee, for thou art past among all these. Even as the diamond shall glow red for the rose, and green for the rose leaf, so shalt thou abide apart from the impressions. I am thou, and the pillar is established in the void. Also, thou art without the stabilities of being, and of consciousness, and of bliss. For I am thou, and the pillar is established in the void. Also thou shalt discourse on these things unto the man that writeth them, and he shall partake of them as a sacrament. For I who art thou am he, and the pillar established in the void. From the crown to the abyss, so goeth it single and erect. Also the limitless sphere shall glow with the brilliance thereof. Thou shalt rejoice in the pools of adorable water. Thou shalt bedeck thy damsels with pearls of fecundity. Thou shalt light flame like licking tongues of liquor upon the gods between the pools. Also thou shalt covet the all-sweeping air into the winds of pale water. Thou shalt transmute the earth into a blue abyss of wine. Ruddy are the gleams of ruby and gold that sparkle therein. One drop shall intoxicate the lord of the gods of my servant. Also Adonai spake unto thee, be, be, be. Be, saying, O my little one, my tender one, my little amorous one, my gazelle, my beautiful, my boy, let us fill up the pillar of the infinite with an infinite kiss. So that the stable was shaken, and the unstable became still. They that beheld it cried with formidable affright, The end of things has come upon us, and it was even so. Also I was in the spirit vision, and beheld a parasitical pomp of atheists, coupled two by two in the supernal ecstasy of the stars. They did laugh and rejoice exceedingly, being clad in purple robes and drunken with purple wine, and their whole soul was one purple flower flame of holiness. They beheld not God, they beheld not the image of God. Therefore they arisen to the palace of splendor ineffable. The sharp sword smote out from before them, and the warm hope writhed in his death agony under their feet. Even as their rapture shore asunder the visible hope, so also the fear invisible fled away and was no more. O ye that are beyond Armuzdi and Arimanes, blessed are ye unto the ages. They shaped doubt as a sickle, and reaped the flowers of faith for their garlands. They shaped ecstasy as a spear, and pierced the ancient dragon that sat upon the stagnant water. Then flesh springs were unloosed, that the folk athirst might be at ease. And again I was caught up into the presence of my lord Adonai, and the knowledge and conversation of the Holy One, the angel that guardeth me. O holy exalted one, O self beyond self, O self-luminous image of the unimaginable knot, O my darling, my beautiful, come thou forth and follow me. Adonai, divine Adonai, let Adonai initiate refulgent dalliance. Thus I concealed the name of her name that inspireth my rapture, the scent of whose body bewildereth the soul, the light of whose soul abaseth this body unto the beasts. I have sucked out the blood with my lips. I have drained her beauty of its sustenance. I have abased her before me. I have mastered her. I have possessed her. And her life is within me. In her blood I have inscribed the secret riddles of the Sphinx of the gods, that none shall understand, save only the pure and voluptuous, the chaste and obscene, the androgyne and gynander that have passed beyond the bars of the prison, that the old slime of Kim set up in the gates of Amen and Ti. O my adorable, my delicious one, all night will I pour out the libation on mine altars. All night will I burn the sacrifice of blood. All night will I swing the thurible of my delight before thee, and the fervor of the horizons shall intoxicate thy nostrils. O thou who camest from the land of the elephant, girt about with the tiger's pal, and garlanded with the lotus of the spirit. Do thou inebriate my life with thy madness, that she leap at my passing. Bid thy maidens who follow thee bestrew us a bed of flowers immortal, that we may take our pleasure thereupon. Bid thy satyrs heap thorns among the flowers, that we may take our pain thereon. 
Let the pleasure and pain be mingled in one supreme offering unto the Lord Adonai. Also I heard the voice of Adonai, the Lord, the desirable one, concerning that which is beyond. Let not the dwellers in Thebai and the temples thereof prate ever the pillars of Hercules and the ocean of the west. Is not the Nile a beautiful water? Let not the priest of Isis uncover the nakedness of Noet, for every step is a death and a birth. The priest of Isis lifted the veil of Isis and was slain by the kisses of her mouth. Then was the priest of Nuit, and drank of the milk of the stars. Let not the failure of the pain turn aside the worshippers. The foundation of the pyramid were hewn in the living rock ere sunset. Did the king weep at dawn that the crown of the pyramid was as yet unquarried in the distant land? There also was a hummingbird that spake unto the horned Serastes, and prayed him for poison. And the great snake of Chem, the Holy One, the royal Uraeus serpent, answered him and said, I sailed over the sky of Nu in the car of millions of years, and I saw not any creature upon Seb that was equal to me. The venom of my fang is the inheritance of my father, and of my father's father, and how shall I give it unto thee? Live thou and thy children as I and my fathers have lived, even unto an hundred millions of generations, and it may be that the mercy of the mighty ones may bestow upon thy children a drop of the poison of El. Then the hummingbird was afflicted in his spirit, and he flew unto the flowers, and it was as if naught had been spoken between them. Yet in a little while the serpent struck him, that he died. But an ibis that meditated upon the bank of the Nile, the beautiful god, listened and heard, and he laid aside his ibis ways and became as a serpent, saying, Peradventure, in a hundred millions of millions of generations of my children, they shall attain to a drop of the poison of the fang of the exalted one. And behold, ere the moon waxed three, he became a Uraeus serpent, and the poison and fang was established in him and his seed for ever and ever. O thou serpent Apep, my lord Adonai, it is a speck of my nudest time, this traveling through eternity, and in thy sight the landmarks are of fair white marble, untouched by the tool of the graver. Therefore thou art mine, even now and forever and forever lasting. Amen. Moreover, I heard the voice of Adonai, Seal up the book of the heart and the serpent, in the number five and sixty seal thou the holy book. As fine gold that is beaten into a diadem for the fair queen of Pharaoh, as great stones that are cemented together into the pyramid of the ceremony of the death of Asar, so do thou bind together the words and the deeds, so that in all is one thought of me, thy delight, Adonai. And I answered and said, It is done even according to thy word, and it was done. And they that read the book and debated thereon passed into the desolate land of barren words. And they that sealed up the book into their blood were the chosen of Adonai. And the thought of Adonai was a word and a deed, and they abode in the land that the far-off travelers called not. O land beyond honey and spice and all perfection, I will dwell therein with my Lord forever. And the Lord Adonai delighteth in me, and I bear the cup of his gladness unto the weary ones of the old gray land. They that drink thereof are smitten of disease. The abomination hath hold upon them, and their torment is like the thick black smoke of the evil abode. But the chosen ones drank thereof, and became even as my Lord, my beautiful, my desirable one. There is no wine like unto this wine. They are gathered together into a glowing heart, as raw that gathered his clouds about him at eventide into a molten sea of joy. And the snake that is the crown of raw bindeth them about with the golden girdle of the death kisses. So also is the end of the book. And the Lord Adonai is about it on all sides like a thunderbolt, and a pylon, and a snake, and a phallus. And in the midst thereof he is like the woman that jetteth out the milk of the stars from her paps. Yea, the milk of the stars from her paps.